started the recording. Thanks so much, Marley and Renee. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. We have our friend Marley Bird with us today, ready for another exciting class. Today, we're going to be learning about how to knit different cable varieties. My name is Renee L. from Yarnspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Please feel free to ask questions in the chat, and I'll make sure that Marley answers them. While we're getting ready to kick things off, please let us know where you're watching from, tell us about your favorite sweaters, how your day is going, and I'm going to hand it over to you, Marley. Cool. Hey, everybody. Can you guys hear me all right? Give me a thumbs up. Yep. I love the interaction. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, hey, as they have said, my name is Marley Bird. I am an ambassador for Yarnspirations.com. I also host the Marley Bird YouTube channel, and I, I am also a knitwear and crochet designer and author and teacher and all the things. Uh, I love cables. I'm very excited that I get to join you guys cables. Now, while you guys are here watching live, show of hands, how many of you have attempted to do a cable stitch before in knitting? Go ahead, anybody? Anyway, quite a few of you. All right, that's good, that's good. Uh, what I figured I would do is I'm going to approach this class from a beginner level of knitting cables, and then we will transition and I will talk to you guys a little bit about cables in general. Some um, basic rules of thumb when it comes to cables, how to cable without a cable needle, and then if we have time, I'll even show you how you can drop stitches down to fix the direction of a cable. So if I have time, I will do that. The pattern we are going to be referencing today as far as a way for you guys to look up these cable stitches that we will talk about is called, what is this called? This is called the Cork Town Knit His and Her Pullover. The link is in the chat so you guys can totally look it up and believe it or not, I have it like right here. I have the sample right here and it is, <laughs> it is amazing. It is super intense. Like I'm looking at this and I'm like, Wow, <laughs> whoever knit this, that's a lot. Because not only do you have the cables here, but you have the texture of the honeycomb cables here. And it is, it is a lot of work here. So this is amazing. Now we are not gonna do this full cable right here in class, but I'm hoping that I will give you the amount of knowledge you need that if you wanted to tackle this sweater, first off, congratulations if you do, that is amazing. Make sure you share with me on social media. But if you decide to tackle this sweater, you will have the information you need to achieve um, your success with these cables. All right, you guys good with that? Sweet. So I'm just gonna be using some worsted weight yarn and a pair of size eight needles. I just grabbed some, so that way I can talk to you about how to do these cable stitches and work them up. I'm also going to use a double pointed needle as a cable needle today. Now you can use actual cable needles. You've probably seen them before. They look like they're across and they kind of have a little crook in them or some of them look like a horseshoe. Like they, there's all sorts of different cable needles out there but you can absolutely just use a double point of needle as a cable needle in a pinch. Um, I prefer a double point of needle because I have really big hands, believe it or not, I have a really big hands. And so using a double point of needle allows me to hold the cable needle, the double point uh, in my hands comfortably. Whereas the little tiny cable needles, I, I, it's not so pretty. So <laughs> this is just much easier for me to do. First off, can I just tell you guys, it's so nice to see a lot of familiar faces in here. So thanks for coming back and joining me again. I feel like that, that actress who's like, you guys really like me. It's really nice to have you here. So, all right, let's go ahead and go down to the hands and we will jump in. Here we go, Kelly. Okay, guys. So what I have done here is I have just cast on 20 stitches, okay? So I cast on 20 stitches and I knitted two rows and then I did some stockinette stitch inside these two um, garter stitches out here. So essentially I've just given myself a little thing to play with here, all right? So you could do the same if you want. You don't have to have this much worked up, just cast on 20 stitches and then let's keep the, the two outside stitches over here and the two outside stitches over here in garter stitch just to help us prevent this from rolling. What that does is it gives us 16 stitches in the middle to play around with. And so we're gonna start off and we will begin with a cable for back and a cable for front. 
Now, before I jump in with that, and this is also going to give you guys some time to get some of your knitting done, let's talk about the construction of an actual cable stitch, okay? So I have my trusty graph paper here. And let's say this is my knitting needle, all right? And this is the knitting needle in my left hand. And you're knitting along, you're knitting along, and you have stitch number one, you have stitch number two. Oh, my, my pen's going to go out. You have three and you have four. All right, then you have five, six, so on and so forth. But we're gonna do a four stitch cable. So we are only concerned about these four stitches. Now cables look really awesome. They look super intense, but the whole thing behind a cable, behind a cable is that we are changing the position on our needle. It's probably better for me to say we're changing the, um, yeah, the position, not the orientation. We're changing the position in that, we are going to move stitch number one and stitch number two over here into the spots of four and three. And we're gonna move stitch number three and stitch number four over here. You see how those arrows there, they cross over? Ding, 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 that's your cable. That is all a cable stitch is. It's literally just crossing over your stitches. So when you, let's say you just dropped these four stitches off and when you pick them up, you accidentally cross them over, you would get a cable stitch. That's all it is, all right? Does that make sense to everybody? So whether you have stitch number one and two go in front of three and four or in back of three and four, that gives you your cable lean. So for example, if we have one and two and they go in front, so let's try and make this to where it looks like they're in front. Does that look like they're in front? So when they are in front like that, you can see that these two stitches here, they are in front of the two stitches in back, which means they're gonna look like they're present and they look like they lean to the left, right? Okay, so now let's say that we have four and three and then one and two, they go behind. Can you see that? Okay, I know that these are not like to scale or anything, but now we have four and three are in front of one and two, and they look like they lean to the right. Can you see that? So if you were to continue doing stitches in this manner, you will start to get a twist in your cable, right? You would get like this twist in your work and you would look like you have this really cool cable happening here. Does this make sense? You see how that cable works? It's purely just changing the position of the stitches on your needle. So when people are like, oh, cables look so hard. Yeah, they look hard. That's half the battle is that you have to get it out of your mind that they are hard because they aren't. They're super simple to do. And then you look like you're some sort of crazy knitting champion when you do them because it's like, wow, this is awesome. And it's all about how you look, guys. It's all about how you look. So we're going to do um, a cable for back and a cable for front. Let's talk about back and front. When we talk about back and front, all right, so we have a cable for back and a cable for front. When they're talking about the back and front, they're literally talking about stitch number one and two. If stitch number one and two are held to the front of the work, okay, then they are going to be in front of stitch number three and four, okay? So this one right here is a cable for front. If stitch one and two is held to the back of the work, and then you work stitch number three and four, and you bring the, the, the stitches that you held to the back, back over here, they're behind these now. These are to the back of the work. This here is a cable for back. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to everybody? Yep, okay, thank you, Gwen. I see you nodding, I see you, Leah. All right, so when you see a stitch that says back and front, that typically is referring to the first two stitches of your cable, okay? There are exceptions to those rules, just like there's always exceptions to rules. But for the most part, whenever they talk about a back or front, they're essentially telling you what you're going to do with your first set of stitches. Now, I changed the wording there to set. Did you notice that? And that's because right now we're talking about 
four stitches. But what if it was a cable six back or a cable six front? Well, when we were talking about four stitches here, we were talking about a set of two and a set of two. If we're talking about six here, it makes sense that if you think about it, it's a set of three and a set of three, right? So for that case, if it's a back or a front, instead of saying, oh, I'm holding two stitches to the front up here because it's only four, down here we're dealing with six, which half of that would be three if that's what this cable is. So we would hold three stitches to the front or three stitches to the back. You guys with me on that? So when you are reading cable abbreviations, for the most part, you can decipher what you're supposed to do just purely based on the numbers that are given and the back and the front. Now there are, are exceptions, there's always exceptions, but for the most part, this is a really good stepping stone to go into. Having said that, you guys, whenever you are going to follow along with a pattern for cable stitches, don't assume you know what the cable stitches are. Always go and look at the abbreviations that the designer wrote and read through how the designer wants you to do those stitches. Here's why. There are times that I've seen patterns that talk about a cable for back, but they are actually talking about an eight stitch cable and they're talking about four whole stitches over here that they want to hold to the front or to the back. So you need to make sure that you know what the designer is intending for you to do before you jump into your cables. Don't automatically assume you know what you're doing. Does that make sense y'all? Okay. All right. So those are some of the big things that we're going to do. So what we are going to do here, let me skip. Do you like my super high tech um, technology here with all of my charts. This is fantastic. This is awesome, right? So we are going to have two stitches out here and then a marker, two stitches out here and then a marker. So that's going to give us in here, we're going to have 16 stitches. I'm going to keep two stitches out here. Here at the beginning, I'm going to keep those two stitches just as plain old knits. I'm going to keep four stitches in the middle as plain old knits. And then that will leave us with four stitches here to cable with and four stitches here to cable with. Does that make sense? So this one here, I'm going to have us do a cable for back. For this one here, I'm going to do a cable for, oh gosh, for front. All right. So this one's going to be back. This one's going to be front. And we're going to just work these up. Now, here's a little chip that I want to tell you. When you're working cables in the manner where you're just doing like a basic rope cable or something, the rule of thumb is that you do an actual cable row. And then for however many stitches you have, you won't do another cable row until you have reached that number of stitches. So meaning you've done a cable row, you would purl back, knit back, purl back, and then do a cable row which would give you one, two, three, four rows. Does that make sense? So you do a cable every fourth row. You have four stitches, do a cable every fourth row, which means in these in between rows, it's pretty easy going. You don't have to think too much. If it was a cable six, right? A cable six back or whatever, you would cable, then you would purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, cable for one, two, three, four, five, six. You see what I mean? Again, there are exceptions to the rules, but this is a very good rule of thumb. Everybody with me on here? All right, let's jump in. I'm gonna just move these up here. Don't worry, these will come back later. Can't go too far. Here we go. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna keep my first two as knits and I'm talking about outside or inside of my markers because I put markers there just to keep those in garter. I'm going to keep knits and knits and I'm going to keep my center four as knits just to begin with. And then we are going to change those to pearls so that way you can see the difference of having cable stitches next to knits and cable stitches next to pearls because when they're next to pearls, they tend to pop off the fabric more. And I want you to be able to see that. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and knit over. And I'm going to start off right here with a cable. So I'm gonna slip my marker. I'm gonna go ahead and knit two. Now I have four stitches here. 
So this is stitch one, two, three, and four. When we were looking at our little chart here, we want our first one, we said we wanted this first one to be back. So that means our first two stitches are gonna be held to the back and we're gonna get a cable that leans to the right, okay? So we have a cable four back, so one, two, three, four. I'm gonna take my cable needle, go into the first two stitches. I'm gonna hold them to the back of my work, just to the back of the work, out of the way. I'm just moving them out of the way. So that way I can come over here to stitch number three and four and knit these, okay? So I'll knit three and I'll knit four. All right, so now three and four are in front. That's what we want, see? Three and four are now in front. One and two are back here, but we don't wanna leave them hanging back there. We wanna knit them. So we can either bring them up here and knit them directly off of our double pointed needle or your cable needle, or you can place these two stitches back on the left-hand needle. Now for this purpose, I'm gonna do them off of the cable needle to start, and then I'll show you as you put them back on the regular needle, but essentially, you're just bringing these back into action. It's like they were in timeout and now they're back in the game. We've changed the position and congratulations, you just did a cable. It's really that easy. Okay, let's go ahead. We're gonna knit four stitches. And now we're over here we're gonna deal with the next four stitches. And for this one, we're gonna do a cable four front. That means our first two stitches here, we're gonna put them on our cable needle. So slip them onto your cable needle and hold them to the front. So they're in timeout, out of the way, but they're held to the front. Go ahead and knit the next two stitches. So we knit three and four. Now we have these two stitches, they're out of timeout, they're out of the penalty box, so to speak. We can bring them up and put them back onto our left-hand needle if you want, and knit them directly off of that left-hand needle. And congratulations, you just did another cable. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and knit these next two stitches, slip my marker and knit the last two stitches. Now remember what I said, our rule of thumb here is if you're working with a four stitch cable, you won't cable again for another four rows, right? So we're gonna purl back, then we will knit back, then we will purl back, and then we'll cable again. So let's go ahead. This is sort of the relaxing part of it all, is you just turn your work, and you don't have to stress too much about what's going on. For me, I'm gonna keep the stitches in between my markers in stockinette. So I'm gonna keep the outside stitches in garter just so it doesn't roll on me. Slip my marker, that's why I have a marker there. And then I'm just going to purl these. I'm gonna keep these in basic stockinette here for the first couple cables. Like I said, I want you to see what the cables look like when they're next to stockinette and when they're next to reverse stockinette. How are we doing so far? Everybody doing all right? It's hard for me to look at the chat when I'm teaching. So I'm just making sure that everybody's doing all right. If you have questions, don't forget to put them in the chat because Renee will be able to jump in and say, hey, Marley, can you show this again? Or can you talk about this again? Absolutely. The chat's a little quiet. It's mostly people singing That's your right. praises and saying that your explanation <laughs> is great, which I oh, agree with. Yay. Um, Donna said she did this cable with a steaked sweater and she loves it. Yes. Did she do the knit along? Is that what she did? I'm guessing, yeah. Donna, did you do the knit along? Steak sweater knit along? Because that is awesome. <laughs> Wait to see if she weighs in. If anyone has yes. any questions, uh, please let us know and we'll, we'll make sure they're answered. Yes. All right, so we do a knit, slip my marker, do these, and then I'm going to work my pearls back. Slip my marker and then purl. The crazy thing about cables, you guys, is that they don't look like much is going on when you first create them. It takes several rows to get into it to kind of be like, oh, look, 
I have a rope happening or I have a braid happening or I have traveling stitches happening or whatever it may be. I have a horseshoe happening. So it will take a little while to get going with it. But once it starts to appear, it's addictive. You can't wait to get to that next cable row to see what's going to happen. Especially if like you're using like a self-striping yarn or something, it's very exciting. And let me get some yarn out of here. I'm using some of my scrap yarn, so it's kind of a mess. All right, so we have some cables happening there. It's a little tricky to see, right? As it's next to all of this stockinette, it's a little tricky to see, but that's okay. We're gonna do the same cable again. So over here, we did a cable for back, and over here, we did a cable for right. I mean, I'm sorry, a cable for front. If you can't remember like a back or a front, just remember that a cable for back leans to the right and a cable for front leans to the left, if that's easier for you to think about it. Um, I, I, I don't know. For me, I, I tend to think about what my second set of stitches are doing. I don't know. I'm completely weird in that way, but I think it's because when I cable without a cable needle, I'm concerned what the second set of stitches are doing, not the first. All right, so I've kept garter stitch, slipped my marker. I'm going to knit two. Now I'm to my four stitches. Now I want to once again do a cable for back. So I'm going to use my cable needle here, slip these two stitches to my cable needle, hold them to the back, knit stitch number three and four. And then I can place these two stitches back on my left hand needle if I want. and knit those two stitches. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna keep these in stockinette. Now we're to these four stitches, and right here, we're going to slip these and hold them to the front. Knit three and four. Slip these two stitches back onto my left hand needle. And remember, you can knit them off your cable needle. It's totally up to you. I tend to always put them back on my, my left hand needle and I don't really know why. I think it's just habit at this point. But you can start to see we have a little hint of some stitches happening there, some cables happening there. They look like they kind of disappear inside that stockinette stitch. Okay, they look like they disappear inside of there. So what I want to do, I want, we're going to do that cable again. However, I'm going to change those center stitches right here and the center stitches or the stitches out there into pearls after I do this row. So that way you can see what it looks like when you have those cables on reverse stockinette. And then I'm also going to show you how you would do these cables without a cable needle because you want to talk about upping your cable game and making it so that you can go nice and fast. That is the, the kicker right there. So let me get across here. And I'm going to go ahead and do it on this next row. And guys, if you don't know me, if you haven't really paid attention to me teaching before, I love stitch markers because I have to use them in my work so that I can recognize stuff. So I'm actually going to add a stitch marker here and here so that way I remember to keep those as pearls. So I'm going to grab two more stitch markers from my set here. You don't have to use them. I have to use them because I forget. All right, so here's what I'm doing. Obviously this would just be a normal, just plain knit row, but I'm gonna change up our stitches on the outside of those cables. So instead of keeping these two as knits, I'm going to purl them. I'm gonna keep these four as knits because those are our four cables. Typically you will keep your cables that are actually working as a cable. If they're not hidden around or anything, you keep those as knits typically. Now, this, that does not mean that you don't have cables that have pearls in them. You absolutely can have that, but I'm just letting you know for, for this purpose, you keep those as knits. This is where I would normally put myself a marker so I remember that I'm gonna purl these. Place my marker 
And then I have my four knits. And then these are just pearl. I don't need a marker there. I can remember that. Slip my marker and then knit two. Okay. So what we're going to start getting here is we're going to get reverse stockinette on the right side of our work between our cables. And what I really want you to notice is how it, inter it interacts with the cables. It really makes the cables pop off the fabric more. And that's why y'all often see cables made um, worked around reverse stockinette or a seed stitch or some sort of a relief stitch because it makes those cables pop off the fabric a little bit more. I mean, nobody really wants to put all that work into doing cables and then not have them show up. So you'll often see that done. And right here, I'm just knitting my knits and purling my pearls. I think I saw a question pop up. Somebody asked if I am pulling my stitches more snug at all when I do my cables. Um, I don't pull my stitch any tighter than I normally would when I do my cable. The only difference there is when I transition from a knit to a purl, I will often take an extra second to give my purl an extra tug once I complete it to make sure that it looks good. Okay, can you see how things are going? All right, so this is my fourth row. I'm ready to do another cable. And this time I'm gonna show you how to do it without a cable needle, all right? So I want you to really kind of listen to what I'm saying first, because I'm gonna try and explain it so that you can um, connect it to how we were doing it with a cable needle. So I'm gonna purl these first two. Now we have four stitches. Now, before we were doing a cable four back and the back led us to believe that these first two stitches, right? They went to the cable needle and they went to the back, right? Okay. If we were doing it without a cable needle, <laughs> we are actually more concerned about what's happening with three and four instead of one and two. And that's because we will be using our, our right hand needle to actually put our needle into three and four in the front or to the back. So here's, here's what's interesting. A cable four back puts one and two in the back, but it puts three and four in the front. So it's like opposite. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna take my right hand needle. I'm gonna come over here and put my right hand needle in front into the front leg of three and four. I use my pointer finger here essentially to pinch these two stitches here. I pinch them up against my right hand needle. So it's like I'm pinching them because I'm going to pull out my left hand needle. So it comes out of all four of those stitches. And what that will do is it will put these two stitches that I have on this needle. It will keep those in place. It makes these two free though. So I will be taking my left hand needle out. So it goes out of all of them. And then I'm going to put it back into those two that are free. It looks scarier than it really is you guys. So I'm gonna take it out, those stitches are free. And then I put those stitches on my left hand needle. Look at this, I'm changing their position on my needle. So I've just changed their position. You see that? I just did it all without a cable needle. And it's the same thing as one and two are now behind three and four. But my little trick of using the whole cable four back, oh, I'm gonna put stitches at the back. Well, you're actually more concerned about what's happening with three and four and there to the front. Does that make sense? So now that they're in that position, you just knit them because now they're in the place they need to be. It's all done. So I will slip this. Here's what I mean about this purl, guys. When I go to purl this one stitch, your purl naturally is a little bit bigger than others. So then I bring my yarn back to the back and I give it a tug to really make sure it's nice and snug. And then I bring it back and then I continue on purling the next stitches. So I make sure that that purl stitch after my knit stitch does not get loose. All right, here we go. Next four stitches. This would normally be our cable four front. So normally I'd put these two stitches on my cable needle and hold them to the front, right? Well, if these are to the front, that means three and four are to the back. So if I'm doing it without a cable needle, I'm gonna take my right hand needle. I'm gonna come to the back of three and four and put my my needle into the back leg of three and four. Once again, I'm gonna take my left hand needle and pull it out of all four of these. 
And what that does is it exposes one and two, and I'm able to just put those on my left-hand needle. I'm changing their position on the needle. Now they're in the correct place I need them to be, right? Because there's three and four and there's one and two. Maybe not necessarily in that order that I pointed them out, but you understand what I'm saying. And now I just knit them, hopefully not splitting my yarn as I do it. But I was able to do all that without a cable needle. Curl this next one. Again, I just pull that nice and snug. And then pull that one and continue on. So even right here, let me pull those out of the way. Right here with just those little bits of reverse stockinette that we have, your cables are already popping off the fabric a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on these. How are we doing? While I'm, I'm kind of on my relief rows here, they're pretty easy to do. Um, any questions, any aha, any, oh my gosh. I mean, what are we, what are we feeling? <laughs> In a similar vein to the question about if you have to pull the stitches tighter, I'm gonna rewind a little bit. Amy had asked, is it normal for the back ones to feel really tight when you knit them? Yes, because you're moving them out of position. You're stretching them. So yes, it's absolutely normal. Perfect. Um, and Cynthia said, is Marley using continental knitting? Yes, I am knitting continental. It's my preferred way. I can knit English style, but it's, I mean, it's just, it, I'm, I'm knitting just like everybody else. I'm just holding my yarn in my other hand but I'm still just knitting and purling just like you guys are. No awesome. difference there. Uh, Debbie, I see your raised hand. Are you able to type out your question in the chat and we can answer it there? That would be awesome. Um, and then there was a really nice compliment. I'm just looking it through. Stephanie okay. said, I am super brand new to knitting and I am completely enamored with your technique of wrapping yarn with your left hand and finger. I hope you have <laughs> videos on your site of that because I want to knit like that. So <laughs> we're, we're also providing ASMR this evening, I guess. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yes, actually, I just finished up what I call Buy Crafty Boot Camp, where I was teaching crocheters how to knit. And because crocheters typically, you know, right-handed crocheters hold their yarn in their left hand, being a continental knitter makes it a lot easier to transition to knitting. So I taught them how to do continental knitting, but all of those classes are free on my YouTube channel and on my website right now, if you're at all interested. But usually when I teach um, on YouTube, I try and show both in my right hand and left hand, but I will be honest as I'm doing cables, guys, I'm not because in my right hand, it isn't as natural. It's not necessarily as pretty. I can try and do some for you if you need me to, but take a look at that. See how much the cables pop out a lot more on the bed of stock or of a uh, reverse stockinette. Can you guys tell that? Yes, no, maybe so. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> All right. So as we look at this, let's bring this in here. What we have here, we have two stitches, two stitches, two stitches, two stitches right here, those pearls. Here's our cable for front. See how they are, these first two stitches are to the front. We have four stitches that are reverse stockinette. We have a cable for back. See how those first two stitches are behind the second two stitches. Then we have two pearls and a marker and two, two uh, garter stitch, two knits. But can you see, you get a really nice cable pattern, just literally stacking the exact same stitch every four rows. And you get a different look, whether you partner it up next to stockinette or reverse stockinette, because the fabric wants to pop up a little bit more. Now, talking about the fabric popping up, I will let you know that as you're using different yarns, a yarn that is a little bit more, I'm gonna say a little bit more sticky, tends to pop up a little bit better than a yarn that's a little bit more slick and glossy. So like um, a Karen Simply Soft with cables is not gonna pop nearly as much as a Peyton's Classic Wool. So like this is a Peyton's Classic Wool and you can see how these cables really pop off the fabric. They look three-dimensional, right? So when you're choosing cables, it's important you choose a yarn that's going to be good for your cable stitches. So I like to think of it as 
the more the sticky the yarn, not necessarily itchy, that's not what I'm saying. I mean, although itchy yarns really do help a lot, but the more the yarn has a little bit more uh, like a bite to it, like a more definition. Um, sometimes even a short staple length really um, does a really good job. Like I even know that like yak yarn looks great with cables. This is 100% wool. Wool, it looks fascinating with cables. Like it just looks amazing. Not only in these really intense long cables that we have here, but these stitches over here, these are cables. These are honeycomb cables. And all of these cables are done with two stitches. It's either two stitches to the right or two stitches to the left, two stitches to the right, two stitches to the left. And you better believe me when I tell you that when you're doing honeycomb, if you're using a cable needle every time, you're hating life, okay? So when you learn how to cable without a cable needle, and you tackle something like a honeycomb, it makes things so much easier because you don't have to use your, your, your cable needle every two stitches, you know what I mean? As you go down this whole row. Does that make sense? Yeah? Do we feel like we're getting a little bit more understanding about cables in general? Yeah? Great. Perfect. Okay. So we've been doing a cable four back and a cable four front. Same thing would happen if we wanted to do cable six back or cable six front. If we wanted to like, you know, grab two stitches over here, it would be the same sort of action here. And what I wanna do is I wanna do a cable six back and a cable six front. So you can see how you kind of get this horseshoe happening. All right, so it's it's the same maneuver. We're still moving stitches. We're just moving a different number of stitches. We're gonna do more rows in between those cables, but it's gonna give us a really cool horseshoe sort of look, okay? Hopefully this will help you um, with the idea of, okay, so you have a good understanding of how this works. Let's see how you just can expand on those skills. So I need to go ahead and work back this row and then the next row I will go ahead and cable. Congratulations, Allie. I'm proud of you. She says she did it. That's really great. I mean, there's nothing better than the first time you actually make a cable. It's like, oh my gosh, I did that. And it's easy, isn't it? It's, it's, it's so, I think the right way to say it is it's deceptively hard. It's not hard at all. It's actually quite easy. It's really super easy to do. You're just changing where those stitches are on your needle and then knitting them out of order, essentially. You're knitting them out of order. Okay. This would normally be my another cable four row, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove these two markers and I'm gonna use six stitches here for a cable six. All right, guys? That's what we're going to do. We're going to do a cable six back and a cable six front. So I'll knit those two, slip my marker. I'll purl one, purl two. And now just so I can get that marker out of the way, I'm just going to slip those so I can get that out of the way. I should have moved it last row, but I wasn't thinking. Okay. So we have six stitches here, four and six. So if I were doing a cable six back, again, if I use my cable needle, I could slip three stitches and hold them to the back. And that's assuming if that's what the cable is on your pattern. Remember to always look at the abbreviations because it could be that it wants you to slip six stitches. It all depends on what the pattern writer wants you to do. But now I'll knit three stitches from my left hand needle, take the stitches I move to the back, and I can slip them onto my left hand needle or knit them off of my double point or my cable needle, whatever you want to use. It's up to you. It looks a little goofy right now because I have all those pearls there, right? So we're gonna keep going. We're gonna get some more fabric here and get it going to see because I have all those pearls. Over here. This would be a cable six front. So I'd hold those to the front, knit three, and then take these from the cable needle. 
Again, these aren't gonna look like much yet because I have those pearls there. But as we get going, we'll be able to better see what's happening. And the cool thing here, my whole point of making sure that I show you this stitch is so that you can see, okay, we're using the same sort of, technology is not the right word, the same sort of like rules that we kind of applied to the cable four and we're applying it now to the cable six and we're gonna get a slightly different cable here, okay? Now I'm just going to knit my knits and purl my pearls and get myself some fabric. I know I'm going a little bit quick here, but I do wanna remind you that this class is being recorded. So it will be available on the Michael's YouTube channel. So if you happen to feel like you're missing something as you're working along with me, just remember you'll be able to go back and watch this again. You'll be able to hit pause and rewind and you'll be able to talk back to your computer or your iPhone at me and just be like, I did it. <laughs> All right. So I know I'm moving along, but I just want to make sure that you can see what's what I'm what I'm hap what's happening here. That's the words I'm trying to say. I'm just gonna pop in for a few questions if that's sure. cool. Sure. So Debbie asked, do cables change the tension or gauge? Yes, they do. That's a great question. So one thing that you'll typically notice is when you follow a pattern, the designer will have you cast on um, fewer stitches than what you ultimately will need for your cable. And then right before you start your cable, they'll have you do an increase where you're working your cable. And what that does is it adjusts for the gauge for your cables, because you see your, your cables are pulling in your stitches, right? Because we're we're moving those stitches out of order. We're changing where they land on our needle. And so it's pulling in on our fabric. So whenever you're going to just willy nilly add a cable to something, maybe you have a stockinette stitch sweater that you're like, I wanna add a cable now. Marley convinced me they're really awesome. You have to plan for that gauge change. You have to plan for those stitches getting pulled in. And usually that's done by, like if it was a cable four, you would say you'd have three stitches and then you'd, you'd increase somewhere in those three stitches. So that way you could have the four stitches to make up your cable. And usually that's written in the pattern for the designer. That's not something, or the designer has written that in your pattern. It's not something you have to remember to do, but it's just an explanation of why that's there. But absolutely, um, fabric is definitely moved in more when you are working with cables. The other thing is it's naturally cable as you, or naturally, um, and happens naturally that when you have two cables that are side by side without any stitches in between them, that they will tend to pull on the fabric between. So see right here, how it looks like that is a pull right there. That's perfectly natural and normal. If you look at any store-bought piece that has like a horseshoe, you're gonna notice that there's looks like there's a little tiny hole and a stretch there. And that's just because that's the way the fabric works. You didn't do anything wrong or anything like that. It's, I mean, it's just the nature um, of the fabric when you're stretching the stitches out from one another. So that was the other reason I wanted to make sure I showed you how to do a horseshoe like this. So that way, if you happen to do one sometime down the road, you aren't like, I did something wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. It's perfectly natural. Another thing to think about guys. So as we transition on and we have more, more rows between our cable rows, sometimes you can get lost and you wanna count your rows. Can I just tell you a little trick that I do because I, I'm terrible at counting my rows. But typically when I'm on a cable row like this, so like I'm, I'm ready to do a cable row, I take a removable stitch marker. I know another stitch marker. I, I swear I don't have stock in these, but I do use them all the time. And I put it at the edge of my work, like into my stitch. And I put it into the stitch on the, the row I'm doing my, my cable on. So actually it wouldn't be in this one. It would be the first stitch I do. So for me, I would, I would knit one. And then I would end up taking this and I'd stick it right into that first stitch because that would be the first stitch of my cable row that I did. So now I can count my rows from my marker. Does that make sense? Um, so I use markers quite a bit to be able to count my rows. 
But right here, it's time for a cable six and we'll do cable six back. Now I'm gonna do it without a cable needle because I think you guys get that whole idea with the cable needle, right? But you can do this with six stitches also. So one, two, three, four, five, six. If we know we have a cable six back, we know that that back refers to these first three. That means these three are gonna be to the front. So I can come over here. See, I kind of, I, I put my finger at the edge of my needle to make them so they don't go anywhere, but I can bring them down so I can get my right hand needle in. And then pinch, pull out, put my needle in, change where they are on my needle, and then knit them. See, now this one, it's cable four front. Okay, I'm sorry, cable six front. So we have six stitches. Front indicates that these stitches here are gonna be to the front, which means these three stitches are gonna go to the back. So I can come over here, go into the back leg of those three stitches. It really helps you have a nice pointy needle. Take your left hand needle out, put it into those exposed stitches, change their position. When I say position, I don't mean like, don't twist them or anything like that. You're just changing where they land. You're putting them out of order on your needle. And then continue on with your pattern. I'll get to the end of the row so you can see what this looks like. You can see you have this horseshoe. You see that? And this is perfectly normal and natural. See how there's like, a, it's, it's stretched out there because we've stretched those stitches. And as you keep going, you'll see there's a little tiny hole right there. Well, don't put your finger in it and make it bigger. You know, don't keep pointing it out. It's gonna be fine. It actually will look really good, but you have a, a really cool horseshoe happening here. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, pretty neat, right? I think so. I think it's cool. Now, something I want to point out, we talked about how you keep these cable stitches in stockinette, right? You keep them basically in stockinette stitch, but there are times in a pattern when you're working with cables that whatever stitches are in back end up being purled, okay? So for example, is it on this one? I don't think it's on that one has to be here somewhere because it's written in the pattern. At some point in this pattern, as you're working cable stitches here, it's these traveling stitches. So these stitches here, it looks like there are three knits, but there are two pearls behind these stitches here, behind these here that have traveled behind. So as this stitch pattern, like these are probably like three to the front and then two to the back, the ones in back have been purled. So one thing you can think about is whatever stitches are going to be popping off the fabric are gonna be public. You wanna keep those in stockinette. But if a pattern has you doing like a cable where you know some are stockinette and some are purls, as you get going on through the pattern, you'll be able to quickly recognize, oh, look, these are my, my stitches that are really popping up. I'm gonna make sure I keep those in stockinette. And then my stitches that are gonna be behind are gonna be purled. So like, if you look at the reverse side of this, you can see where the cables were, there are purls. Actually, you probably can't see very well. It's harder to see on that side. Never mind, scratch that. Um, but it is there. And you'll notice in the pattern itself, over here, there's a T4B, a T4F, T5B, T5F. And if we read the instructions, it says slip next stitch onto a cable needle and leave at the back of the work. Then you knit three and then you purl one from your cable needle. Can you see that? So that there, it looks like it could be like a four stitch cable and we are dealing with four stitches. However, we are only moving one stitch to the back, right? Slip next stitch onto the cable needle and leave at the back of the work. So we're only knitting one stitch or leaving one stitch to the back. Then we're knitting three stitches on our left hand needle. And then we purl that one stitch from the back. But overall, the way we approach our cables, right? It's all the same. We're still just changing the position 
of where the cables are on or where the stitches are on our needle. So even though these stitches are things you've never done before, you absolutely could do those stitches, right? You absolutely know how to do them because what is a cable, if not just moving those stitches around on your needle and then where, when they finally land where they're supposed to be, you either knit them or you purl them. You do what the pattern tells you to do. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, great. Something else I wanna point out is, um, so obviously we talked a little bit about your cables next to your bed of reverse stockinette, but you'll notice here on the pattern, we also have this really nice row of twisted rib. It's a twisted pattern. And so that's a really great way that a lot of cable patterns will really define a cable stitch too, is they will um, define this section of cables with a twisted stitch on the outside. So when you do those twisted stitches, it's really a matter, you wanna make sure you're knitting through the leg that's gonna twist it both on the knit side and the purl side, um, which is really um, fantastic to do. All right, how are we feeling so far? Everybody feeling confident? You're like, I can't wait to tackle some cables. All right, let me come over here and move this. I'm going to tink back. Actually, what do I wanna do? No, I'm not going to. I'm going to I'm going to knit a couple rows here cuz we have a couple minutes. Are there any more questions? I mean, now's the time to kind of ask those questions. Well, I wait for everyone to weigh in. I've got two from a little bit before. Okay. So, Stephanie asked, does cabling add more yardage to the garment? Does it make the garment heavier? Yes, it does. Um, because you're pulling those stitches and stretching, it uses just a little bit more, um, yarn. So when you do cables, you want to make sure that you plan for that extra yarn. It does make your, your fabric a little bit heavier. Awesome. And that's what we like them in for sweaters. Yes, they are fantastic. Patty said, how do you feel about using a knit transfer tool for making cables? Is it a help or is it a hinder? I don't know what a knit transfer tool is like, like a cable needle. I'm not sure what a knit transfer tool is. If, she could... if you're still around, please weigh in. We would love to hear what a, yes. your thoughts. I don't know what that is. I'm not sure if you're talking about a cable needle, like I so rarely use a cable needle that I'll go to teach a cable class and I'll forget to bring one. <laughs> a <laughs> true story. Like it happens all the time. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to bring one. Um, I'm going to stop here for a second. So I have these six stitches, right? And let's pretend that I didn't want them to lean the, that way. I wanted them to go the opposite way. One thing I could do is I could drop all six of those off. Take them off my needle. Undo them. Okay, so now they're back to where they were, right? So I'm gonna put them on a double point here. Just getting them back on there. They're all back on there. I also wanna make sure that they're not twisted. So what I'll do is I usually grab another double point. You can do this with four stitches, six stitches. You can do this with anything. I'm just gonna go through here and make sure they're all like on the needle correctly and not twisted. Like that one there's twisted. So I just want to correct it and that one's correct. So there we go. All right. So we've dropped those stitches off. We pulled the work out. These strands right here used to be the stitches, right? They used to be the stitch stitches. So we will use these strands as our working yarn when we fix these stitches. Now, before these were, um, were these backs or fronts? I can't, I think these were back, cable three back, or um, I'm sorry, cable six back. We're gonna change them to where they're cable six front. All right, we're just gonna change them because we're gonna pretend that that's what we were supposed to do. So we definitely wanna change the position of the stitches. So let's go ahead. We can, because we use our double points here, we can go ahead and just slip these onto our double points, literally just change where they are just like so. See how I just moved them and then put them back on. You guys see what I did there? 
I, I just changed them. So I took one, two, three, and I put them behind three, let's see, four, five, and six. See that? I just changed them. Now all I want to do is knit them. And I want to knit them with my strands of yarn that I pulled out. So you want to make sure you grab the bottommost strand. Pull this up. And just knit these stitches. And it might be a little bit loose. It sometimes is. But as you get going and you get down to the last few stitches, and they stretch out, you can go into the stitch, go underneath that yarn, pull it through and off, go in, go underneath that yarn, pull it through and off. That's the first row. Come do the second one, you're gonna do the same thing. That's the beauty of these double points. You just pull it down, right? And you just do it again. So we do the first, second, third, fourth. I think that one's twisted because I pulled it through the wrong way, but that's okay. Right here, it's just like a bind off, right? I have the stitch jump over the bar. Now I have this cable is now going the direction I wanted to change it to, right? I have these stitches and I have to decide, do I put them back on this needle or this needle? I actually put them on the left-hand needle because my working yarn is over here on the right-hand needle. So I just come up here and just make sure they all transition back to my left-hand needle. They're now in the direction I want them to be in. And we just fixed the direction of our cable. Did we have to do that? No, but I wanted to show you how to, to fix a cable if you need to. So the whole point there is that if you have a cable that you accidentally crossed the wrong way, it's not the end of the world. You can drop down and fix it. All right, so hopefully that just blew your mind away. That's the end of the class. <laughs> All right. Ta-da! All righty. So how are we feeling? Gwen, you good? Awesome. I love it. Kim, you good? I see you nodding. Awesome. Sylvie, you good? Yes. All right. Susan's good. Sandra's good. Janet's good. Hannah's good. Gita, are you good? No, <laughs> I can't tell if she's thinking. She's just, she was really paying attention. So she's going to watch the replay, I'm sure. Listen, at the end of the day, you guys, it is just sticks and strings. Don't be afraid to play around with the stitches. You're just changing them uh, as far as the order they are on your needle. And you get to play around and have fun with them. Try out different knit stitches. There's a lot of different patterns out there you can try. You don't have to jump in with this experienced level sweater here. There are uh, cable patterns that are real simple for like ear warmers, for gloves, for mittens, for hats, for cowls, for shawls, all sorts of different things. And hopefully now you are not afraid to tackle those patterns without a cable needle or with a cable needle. Don't worry. We are here for you no matter which way you choose. If you do any of those patterns, I would love to see it. Will you share with us on social media? Use hashtag Marley Bird for me, hashtag Yarnspo for Yarnspirations, or hashtag Make It With Michaels for Michaels. Uh, so that way we can see your work and smash your like button. If you like patterns like this, make sure you check out yarnspirations.com. They've got a lot of really great cable patterns. And then I have a lot of different cable pattern um, or cable videos on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. You can check out also. All right. That's it for me, guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand it off to you, Renee. All right. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, everyone. As Marley mentioned, you can share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag yarnspo. Um, just a reminder, you can find more classes on michaels.com and a recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. And that's it for me. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye, Kelly. <laughs> Bye, Marley. Have a great day. <laughs> you too. Bye, Renee. Bye. <laughs>